This is Star Talk. So, Bill, did you collect stuff as a kid? Yeah. What would you collect? Rocks. And then uh, in ninth grade, we were compelled to get an insect collection. Really? Ah. I can still give you order and family of a lot of insects. Mm. And wow. you can see evolution, you know, from your orthopterans to your hymenopterans, for example. I was, I, clear, okay. Clearly. Right. Your locusts <laughs> to your four-wing flies. Gotcha. And you, you can see it. And Chuck, yeah. do you ever collect anything? I collect dung beetles. <laughs> um, do you really? Because it would be pretty cool if you did. It would be pretty cool because, quite frankly, they're so varied. And uh, it really depends on upon where they live. You so know? No, when you speak of dung beetles, you have to use in a British accent. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I collect <laughs> dung beetles. <laughs> there you go. Uh, people don't know, but some I dung beetles. I think you're are, pulling our metal tarsal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, uh, uh, I I did I, collect things as a kid. I didn't collect Jack no? as a kid. No. You know what's funny? I still, okay, I'm ashamed to say what I collect right now, but it's hotel key cards. Don't ask me. Let's not go into it. Really? That's what I collect right now. Okay, when I was older, I started collecting keys. Really? Yeah, I have a key ring that has maybe 500 keys on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I stopped. I said, "Why the hell am I doing this?" And I just stopped. I just hoping one morning open I woke every up. door. <laughs> open every door you encounter. So, Bill Darwin was a big collector. He came up with evolution by natural selection. Could you give us like a three-minute exposition of Darwin's theory of evolution? The big idea is that uh, living things make more of themselves than can survive. Okay. Troubling, troubling realization. But All right. left to their own, dandelions would take over the world. Left to their own. That's why there's so many acorns on the ground under exactly, an acorn tree. Exactly. That's why there's so many sperm. Right. Yes. Half a billion last yes. I counted. Yeah. Uh, wow, that would take you all afternoon. <laughs> and so. Uh, <laughs> I estimated. <laughs> so uh, that fundamental idea. That Damn you, it, I lost count. <laughs> so you end up. Start again. Starting over. Go ahead. Uh, well, that, I mean, and you can't really tag them. Not, I mean, there's probably a radioactive But you stay there. Technique. You, you, don't you mess it up my technique. Technique. But the thing is, uh, species make more of themselves than can survive, so they compete uh, for places and ecosystems, and then they compete within their own species. That's sexual selection. And then here we all are. Now, uh, along this line... People, the, consequ- the conclusion that Darwin reached, and I think many naturalists reach naturally, is that uh, we are all to have a common ancestor. We're all descended from the same thing, right. whatever that thing is. And people throw out the word single-celled organism, archaea, with something like this. But uh, there's no evidence on Earth so far that there's any other way to do it except with DNA. So uh, this... The thing that is fascinating is Charles Darwin wrote this book where he has the theory and the experiments. He was quite a diligent experimental in one volume, and he didn't know about DNA. Yes. He didn't know about genes as such, genetics. He didn't know what we think of as genes. He didn't know chromosomes, really. He just was like jamming, looking at his collections and reaching amazing conclusions, world-changing conclusions. Got to respect that. Which have since been confirmed oh, via man. Every DNA which way. and Every which way. chromosomes oh, yeah. and genes and so forth. Oh, yeah. This is Star Talk.